Are we live? Are we live already? Looks like we're live. Hello everyone and welcome to yet another Zuzin session. How about that? But you didn't expect that shit to happen yet again. So let's make a little bit of an announcement and officially start the stream. So and uh, let's go um, red square, why not, live on Twitch. And what are we doing today on Twitch? Let me copy paste the topic. Today you are doing something special. Today we, today we are about to jump into pretty deep rabbit hole, I would say. So today we are going to try to compile Jai to WebAssembly. Right, so <laughs> the interesting thing about that is that uh, Jai does not support that at all. Uh, but there is a couple of loopholes that we're going to explore today, hopefully. We'll see how it goes. Twitch.tv slash studying. Uh, right, so I hope I didn't make a typo and I'm going to ping everyone who's interested in being ping. I didn't think there is a typo in here. Maybe there is. Um, I have a little bit of a dyslexia. So hello, hello everyone. Welcome, welcome, welcome. So um, let's take a look. Uh, on the previous Jai streams, we were working on a Jai break, right? So basically, um, breakout clone um, in Jai. So I started to develop this uh, breakout clone just, you know, to test things out. And uh, let's maybe take a look at it. Um, so, hello, how do? Hello, hello, welcome, welcome, welcome. How are you guys doing? So let me go to jbreak and see if I need to fetch anything. So because I've worked on this game a little bit off screen uh, and I definitely need to fetch the latest stuff. So after that, uh, I'm going to try to compile this entire thing. So jai Linux and we're going to go to the first dot jai. Uh, okay, so I actually upgraded to the latest beta, right, so, and I have this problem yet again, where I have to make this thing uh, a system library, right, so I already explained that before, and uh, there you go, so we have a game, and I'm gonna try to run the game uh, in debug mode, super quick, so this is how it looks like, and, uh, yep, so that's the game we've been developing. Uh, it's actually pretty cool. I really like how uh, the the aesthetics of the game, right? So I think it's pretty it's pretty cool, uh, especially the color palette and stuff like that. So one of the things that bothers me about this game is that I can't really share that game. Uh, I can give people a binary, right, to run on, on their machines, but I cannot compile it on anything but Linux, right? So I, I would presume that majority of people actually use Windows. And I want this thing to be cross-platform, right? So usually I would just give people the source code and ask them just build it yourself, right? Uh, and that usually works quite well. But unfortunately, not everyone has a, a Jai compiler, right? So there's a, like a couple of hundred of people have this compiler, but not everyone. So it's not like... I can easily share this entire thing, right? So I can share, but it's kind of difficult. So the best way to share this game for as many people as possible would be to compile it to WebAssembly. In a similar way as I um, created um, at my snake game. So do you guys remember the snake game? So Tsojin Snake C Wasm. So essentially it's a snake game um, that is written in C but it's compiled to WebAssembly. I haven't updated the, the thumbnail, so I should probably do that at some point. Uh, right, so, and it looks like this. Right. So this is written in C and it works in the browser, right? There you go. So, and it's actually really clever. I mean, it's, it's really obvious how to do something like that, uh, but I really like the approach. So the entire logic of the game is actually contained in a single module that doesn't depend even on uh, C library. Uh, right, so here it is, so game.c. And this is the entire logic of the game, right? So it's around like, I don't know, a thousand lines of code? Yeah, yeah it's, it's almost a thousand lines of code. And it's only a logic, it doesn't have anything else, right? So, and essentially it also defines um, 
some sort of interface for a particular platform, right? So this is the only platform specific thing that the game logic needs. It needs to be able to feel the rectangle, uh, to stroke the rectangle, feel some text, maybe panic, maybe lock something and stuff like that, right? And if you are implementing the game for a specific platform, you need to implement these methods somehow. And also the game itself uh, implements some sort of an interface that the platform can call when it organizes the event loop, right? So game initialization, the resize of the window, rendering, updating with delta time as usual, and also the key down event, right? So the platform uh, usually implements the event loop and it also implements all of these methods, right? And this game is implemented for two platforms. It is implemented for web. Uh, web implementation is written in JavaScript. So this is the thing that adapts that interface for the browser. And uh, we also have the SDL implementation, so SDL main. Uh, right, and this is the thing that adapts that for SDL, but the logic doesn't really care whether it's a browser or SDL, it just doesn't even know. What it does, it just defines uh, this interface, and the platform has to implement it however it wants. You see what I mean? Right, so that's a very basic idea. I'm gonna give you the link to this, uh, to this game in here if you're interested, so I probably should actually start maintaining the description. Uh, how are you guys doing? Uh, how everyone is doing? <clears throat> okay, so let me see. Uh, description, so maybe I'm gonna actually find the description. Uh, so I have breakout three. I'm, I'm not sure if it's a breakout three. Uh, okay, so I'm gonna just, you know, assume that it is uh, breakout four. Uh, right, and what I'm gonna start in here, so we're gonna have a references, references. Right, so first of all, here is the um, source code of the game, right? So here is the source code of the game, um, uh, the, the Jaya game, and this is the source code of the snake game, right? And I'm gonna actually put all of these things in here, right? So this is the source code. Uh, of the breakout game, right? So this is the source code of breakout game, uh, and this is the source code, source code of snake game. Mm, there we go. Emacs is actually kind of weird. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and essentially, what I want to do, I want to do the same thing, but with the jailbreak game, right? Um, so if I could, if I could do something like that with jailbreak, uh, I could share it quite easily with uh, everyone who has the browser, right? So interestingly enough, so how does Jai work, right? How you know? build configuration works. So essentially, um, you have a meta program, right? You have a meta program and you set up the build options, right? You set up the build options. And uh, all of the build options are available in here, right? So there are build options, here they are. And uh, you can set some of these flags. So the philosophy of this language is that uh, there is not that many flags in the command line, right? So all of the command line flags are actually the structure, uh, the fields of the structure of build options, right? So, and it's actually quite convenient because you can like see them. So they're basically the documentation of themselves. Uh, and all, also all of that stuff is uh, statically tight. On top of that, there is very interesting section of the options called LLVM options. Right. So, and if you take a look at LVM options, there is, um, you know, different LVM related stuff. And the most interesting one is output LLVM IR, which is rather interesting. So, and it outputs staggered obj name dot ll dot bc. So, ll, as far as I know, it's an intermediate representation for LLVM and it's like its own C like language right and bc is the same intermediate representation but in actually in byte code right so ll is a text uh, version and bc is a byte version so and interestingly enough for clang 
The .ll files are sort of like a native source code. Clang can actually take ll files and compile them to, uh, to whatever target you want. And the most interesting thing is that uh, Clang can have WASM32 target. So theoretically, you can try to generate .ll files and using Clang, compile them to WASM. So in reality, it, it is not going to work that easily because the entire thing is um, only supported on x86-64. The entire compiler only works on x86-64, so there's a lot of uh, things that are hard-coded for x86-64. And um, it may not work that easily, but we're going to actually try to explore what we can do there. Maybe we can, you know, come and add something out or maybe adapt something, just like try something out. Uh, and on top of that, Jai actually generates quite a heavy runtime for, for your application, right? It actually includes a lot of things uh, that are probably not needed for for the game and maybe we're gonna try to remove them somehow manually or maybe ignore them so it's gonna be like sort of like a uh, like a baggage that comes with the wasm module but we never call to any of that runtime uh, we'll see we'll see i already kind of explored uh this um you know this thing a little bit just to make sure that i'm not going to end up on a dead end so but uh yeah it's gonna be interesting it's gonna be interesting so uh, intermediate code. Uh, two, 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 two. Mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. Rabbit holes. Okay. <laughs> so let's try to explore that. I want to try to first compile to uh, WebAssembly a very simple program. I, I don't want to jump into the, like trying to compile this game uh, right away because this game like has a lot of things. Uh, not this game, but this game. This game has a lot of things and uh, I don't. I think it's going to be really difficult to actually uh, like jump into it. Uh, so we have two consequent subscriptions in a row. Uh, Doruk Sega, thank you so much for tier 1 subscription and there you go, cut uh, Diego Catalao, I hope I pronounced your name correctly. Thank you, thank you so much for all of the subscriptions, even though I don't get any money from them, but I really appreciate them. Nonetheless, maybe one day I'll get some money from them, but we'll see. Mm. I tried compiling Jai to Wasm, but the intrinsic was making it hard. I also tried compiling Jai to Wasm, and I know a couple of tricks, and that's the reason why I'm streaming all of that right now. So I know that it is hard. I know what you're talking about, but I again, I have a couple of tricks up my sleeve. So uh, let's give it a try. Um, so let me go somewhere here. So let's create Jai Wasm file. So the reason why it is so hard is because, again, the Wasm platform is not supported at all. Uh, so and which is fine because the language is not finished, right? So maybe at some point, at some point, uh, we're going to have Wasm platform, uh, but we'll see, we'll see. Well, I mean, I don't know, like I think in 2022, you have to at least acknowledge that Wasm exists, but we'll see, we'll see. Um, anyway, <clears throat> so let's actually create a simple hello world, right? So, so this is that. And uh, to, to, to. so I'm gonna do print. Uh, hello, uh, I'm sorry, sailor. Yeah, I keep forgetting. Okay, so let me try to compile this entire thing, and we'll see how it goes. Uh, Doctor Poopy, thank you so much for 12 months of uh, Twitch Prime subscription. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Have a good day, fam. Thank you. Have a good day to you as well. Uh, all right, so let's do Linux, and I'm gonna try to compile this entire thing, and it compiled, as you can see. Right. 
uh, and here is the uh, hello world. So to set the output intermediate representation flag, we have to create a meta program. So we have to create a second program, even though I'm going to call it first, uh, first.jai is going to be the second program, which will compile this program, right? So essentially, the, the way this language works is you create a meta program that compiles another one. Right, so essentially there is no separate build system and there is no separate build language, like a build scripting language, like in the majority of the of the languages where like in C++ you have the C++ and then you have this scuffed CMake language to build C++. In Jai it's the same language. Um, so yeah, essentially you build Jai with Jai. So it's a, it's a pretty interesting idea. Like, I think uh, it's not a particularly unique idea these days. A lot of other languages also try to implement that, but I presume they actually stole that idea from Jai. Anyway, so uh, let's actually start implementing that. Let's import basics, right? Because any Jaya program uh, needs basics. And uh, since it's a meta program that is going to compile the other one, we need to include the compiler, right? So there you go, here is the compiler. So, and we're gonna execute everything at compile time, right? So to execute stuff at compile time, we need to do run, right? So, and that thing will execute things at compile time. And Anonymous uh, actually gifted uh, two tier one sub. Thank you so much, Anonymous, for gifting two tier one subs. And everyone who got the subs, welcome to our epic uh, J Club. Um, right. <clears throat> I'm confused why people still call it first J instead of something like build J. Uh, I don't know. Maybe because it's not necessarily may not necessarily build things. It's just like something that you have to execute first. I don't know. It doesn't really matter. It's just like a more of a convention and it as far as i know this is even old convention somebody told me that it's an old convention uh but i don't know i really like this uh convention so we have the main program and you have the thing that builds it uh one life is left i'm sorry that you're not trusted let me actually trust you <laughs> uh there we go so you should be able to post anything that looks like a link without being timed out um so i use build.j but the examples all used first yeah uh, that's the reason why I use it, because I saw it in examples. Okay, so let's actually see how it works. So, hello uh, from build. Right, so we're going to have something like this. And I'm going to try to compile this entire stuff. Uh, uh, first. Right. So the problem with this thing is that it requires the entry point, so we have to disable the generation of the uh, output. So to do that, I need to go to the compiler and see how to do that. So it was a function set build uh, options, right? So it's a cell build options, but during compilation. Yeah, there you go. Uh, set build option during compilation. Mm -hmm. And I need to take a look at the definition of this specific structure. So we have to do do output, but we have to set it to false, right? So that's what we need to do. Uh, do output, and we need to set it to false. So in here, it's rather interesting. So this is the workspace, right? So and minus one indicates the current workspace, I presume. Uh, right, there we go. So that should work now. And if I try to run this entire thing, as you can see, it's, it tells hello from build. It doesn't really build anything yet, uh, but at least it says hello uh, from build. So to build anything, we have to create a workspace, right? So I still don't really understand what is a workspace. But as far as I can tell, it's sort of like a build configuration, right? So in my game, I actually built uh, debug and release simultaneously because it's kind of convenient because they are different environments. And if I change something, uh, the code may not necessarily compile in one environment, right? That's why I build both of the environments simultaneously because the compiler actually quite quick. So it allows me to do that. Uh, right, so, and if I take a look at the game, so it's a dry break first Jai, and I have build release, and I also have build debug. And in both of the cases, I create two separate workspaces. So how I understand workspaces is that they are like different build configurations, right? So if you want to do two builds, right, you want to build uh, executable and another executable or maybe library, you, you would have separate workspaces for that, if I understand correctly, I think. Um, so 
In any case, we need to create a workspace. Uh, so create workspace. So the function that does that is literally called create workspace. Okay. So, um, so you also have to give the name to the workspace. So it's going to be an agile wasm. Let's call it agile wasm. And as far as I know, it can also fail, right? So, and it fails when it returns zero, because usually you check whether you fail by doing this, right? Uh, not, not workspace. And here we're going to say something like error could not create a workspace. Uh, workspace. There we go. And we're going to exit with non-zero exit code. Cool. <sighs> All right. So now we have to set the build options, but to set the build options, we need to get the current build options. So get build options. There we go. Uh -huh. So I just provide W and that gives me the build options. There you go. And uh, so what we what we are going to set build options um, for now. So we're building executable by default. Um, I think the only thing that we need to set is the output executable name. Let's give, uh, quickly do that. So output executable name. Uh, let's call this thing uh, Jai Wasm, right? Or maybe Wasm Jai. Um, and then we have to set the build options back, right? So essentially you get the current build options, you sort of patch them and then you set them back, right? So that's how it works. And uh, after that, you just have to add a build file to the current um, workspace. And the file that we want to add in here is going to be main.jai, right? So I'm going to uh, add it to the workspace. And there you go. We created the build script. So this is the build script. Uh, let me remove that. Let me also remove that. Okay. So, and let me try to compile that. And there you go. So it created the build folder and the wasm.jai. And then I can run this entire thing. And as you can see, it says hello seller. So as you can see, we have the main program and we have the build script. Cool. So the most interesting part in here is the dot build uh, folder, right? And if you take a look into that, you will see some object files, right? You will see some object files. And these are the object files that are going to be linked into the final executable, right? It's quite important. I'm not really sure why there's four of them, um, but essentially they contain all of the symbols that are going to be linked together in a final program. It's like, this is the final program, but for some reason it's split in four separate modules that are then linked together anyway. So I presume maybe this is because of the multi-threading of the compiler. So the compiler is trying to uh, parallelize the process. So maybe since I have four cores, right? So actually two cores with like hyper threading and stuff like that. Um, it basically tried to compile this entire thing in four threads and to make them like non interlapping, like it's, it's split it into four separate modules. I think this is how it works, maybe. Uh, but I still don't really understand why it's split in usually like in several object files. Um, in any case, so let's try to enable that um, output intermediate representation option, right? Uh, the one that we were talking about. So uh, let me see. So it's NLLVM options and we're going to have an output LLVM. We're going to set it to true, right? So and let's try to compile uh, this entire thing and see what's going to happen. Okay, it is waiting. Now let's take a look at the .build file. Okay, as you can see, it generated .ll files, and one of them is actually 50 megabytes. <laughs> uh, right, so these files are like with very long lines. Would you look at that? <laughs> right, so the ASCII text. Uh, right, I, I'm really scared to open this one, right? So because I'm not sure if the if Emacs is going to survive. Like opening big files in Emacs is already quite dangerous. But if you have long lines, it's like straight up death. Uh, we can try to open it. Yeah, wh why not? So, okay. Well, so far so good. It doesn't really, you know, fail too much. But if I go down, uh, So it's it's that. So 
So, <laughs> straight up dead. So, a simple file. Uh, F? Are we F? Are you... How did we F? We didn't F. Um... Mm. Why people said F? Okay. Uh, okay. So yeah, let's not let's not do that again. But anyway, so these text files is basically the LLVM intermediate representation. Uh, okay, so let's go to um, what was that? Wasm? Yeah. So J Wasm. Um, so if we pick something in here, right? So this is basically a LLVM intermediate representation. I don't really understand this language, but it's sort of like um, uh, intermediate language between like C and assembly, right? So this is how it looks like. And you can see some of the functions in here, right? So it, it calls to memcopy or something like that. Uh, it feels like they start with define uh, for instance, in here, you have default allocator proc. I, I wonder if we can see some functions in here that we can like correspond to an actual JI code. Uh, okay, so for instance, we have runtime support default allocator, right? So if I go to JI, uh, to modules in here, can I find such thing there somewhere? Uh, let's see. Yeah, we found it. So there you go. Here it is. So here is the function. It's just like a call to the function. But do we have the declaration? Oh, there you go. So here's where it's declared. And uh, then we can find the corresponding function within the intermediate representation, right? So here is uh, the intermediate representation of that specific function. Uh, right. Let me recompile that because I'm a little bit afraid that I modified this file when I was like typing uh, stuff in there. So let me actually remove everything in here. And uh, then I'm going to do jai bin jai linux so this is the first jai mm -mm. okay so we compiled everything uh okay cool so let's try to compile something right so as far as i know you can just do straight up clang uh wasm jai and like a little file right again LL files, the, the text version of intermediate representation of LLVM is basically the native language for Clang, right? So that means you should be able to just do that. Theoretically. It takes some time, but we have some problems. We have some syntactical problems, at least for this specific file. Uh, right, so, and we can try to compile this one. It still fails on all of these things. And this is probably because I have an old Clang. Um, I'm pretty sure, yeah. So I have a Clang version seven because I'm using um, Debian. <laughs> I'm, using Debian. Uh, I'm not sure which one the the Jai uses, but it's definitely not uh, not seven one. So along with Jai, we have uh, the linker, right? The linker that comes from Clang, uh, right? So we can try to run it. So it's going to be LLD Linux, and uh, yeah, I wonder if I can just like check the version of it. I can't really check the version. It wants me to be. It's a generic driver. Invoke LDD LDD macOS. Um, we can try to make like a um, symbolic link to actually give it certain name. And then I can try to do LD, LDD uh, version. So it is actually seven. Hmm. Interesting. Okay. So uh, let me, let me actually download the latest clank. I think, I think I didn't have a latest clank on this machine. So let me see. Oh yeah, I forgot that uh, the KGB is actually checking all of my Google queries. Uh, so we have to wait. Do you compile LLVM code with Clang? That's a good question. It's a very interesting question. I'm not sure how to answer that. Okay, so let's go in here. Mm, 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 mm. So download. Mm -mm. Uh, 
So can I just like go to the GitHub? A clang download um clang LLVM GitHub. All right. Because I know that on GitHub you can find some of the releases there. Um mm. Do, 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 do. So 61 releases, not even 69 releases. God damn. Okay, so this is the latest version of LLVM. It's a Clang plus LLVM. So what I need is Linux. Uh, so there's a Linux for a Arch 64 ARM. Where is x 64 <laughs> Is that it? So they abandoned x86-64, so is it finally obsolete or something? I, I don't know. So there is for, for free BSD, but not for... Okay, that is really weird. Uh, I didn't want to click that. Uh, okay, <laughs> that is really weird. Um, AMD-64... Okay, there we go. So we have something in here. Um, I remember... Okay, so I know that some time ago I just downloaded the 13 one. Um, 13. Let me, let me go a little bit back. I think I want this one. Uh-huh. The reason why I want this one is because it has old Ubuntu. Right, it doesn't have a Ubuntu, but it has a, like old Ubuntu, which might be compatible with uh, with Debian that I have. Right, so there you go. So let's actually try to download it here. Um, super quick. I wonder if it's going to take too much time. I hope it's not going to take too much time. Okay, so it's relatively fast. Uh, while we're waiting for this entire thing, does anyone have any questions maybe? So we have to download half of a gigabyte, apparently. So it's going to be like seven minutes or something. Mm. Clank for 14, that's twice the clank you have. Yeah, I have a clank seven. And then... Mm. Do, 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 do. There's also KGB return results manually. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure they do. Um, hmm. So I'm thinking maybe I should make a small break while this thing is downloading, uh, right? Because I want to actually pour myself a cup of water because I didn't do that before the stream for some reason. So let's make a small break. Um, hey, yo, what is up? How's it going? Are we still downloading? We are still down. 22 minutes? What the fuck? Well, I didn't expect that, so it's not supposed to be this long. <sighs> uh, well, that is really sad. Um, mm -mm -mm -mm. So maybe I can get the clank from my other account. Uh, so, all right. I don't think I want to wait 22 minutes. <laughs> so yeah, let me actually uh, disable that. Can I even cancel that? I don't think I can cancel that easily. Okay, so here it is. Uh, let me try to actually grab it from my other account. Destroy computers, thank you so much for 37 months of tier one subscription. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, all right. So did I leak any SMS messages? SMS messages, short SMS messages. Uh, so yeah, there we go. Mm, I'm gonna go to here. Right, so I'm gonna just like go into my other account super quick. Why am I here? Uh, I think I wanna go here. Uh-huh. Because I already downloaded that before, right? Because I'm using like um, old Debian, and I always need like a fresh software. Uh, so, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so just a second. Uh -huh. Open 
think Lang. Uh, which one? I think. Okay, so I have the eleventh version, right? So I do have the eleventh version. So let me quickly copy it. I hope it's not going to take too much time. Uh, right, I'm copying it. So should be relatively fast. Not the thirteenth one, but at least eleventh one. So a little bit like older. So maybe that one is going to work um, somehow. So let me see. Uh, let's try to unpack that. And very late DJ finally came out. No, it didn't. I'm sorry. Um, so I'm in a closed beta as of right now. All right, so here we have Clang and stuff like that. And FM has so many tools, like holy shit. Why does it, does it need so many tools? Um, I don't understand. So much crap. Um, why isn't that like a single thing? <laughs> I don't know, maybe there is a reason for that. Also a bunch of libraries that you can link with, I guess. Dot a files, static files. Mm, 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 mm. The clang AST. So by the amount of like libraries and small tools, I can like feel the amount of over engineering. It's just insane. Um, okay, so is it is it over? I, I, I think it's over. Uh, okay, so we unpack that and here I was trying to compile this thing, so now I can try to do it like this. Uh, right, so I'm trying to compile the LLVM file. Right, let's actually start with the zeros one. Um, okay, it kind of worked, it spit out a lot of like warnings, oh, okay, a, a lot of undefined references, so it's trying to reference to some functions that don't exist and this is because it's i think it's trying to create uh, the um, the final executable so we have to actually provide minus c flag to compile it to just object file right can we compile it to object file okay so we managed to compile it to object file and this is the object file created by clank right so now it should be possible to set the target to wasm32 right so uh, let's go ahead and try to do that. Okay, so it kind of, yeah. Couldn't allocate output register for, const for constraint, these things. So there is some constraints within that file that require these registers, which is not really a thing in Wasm. In fact, as far as I know, in Wasm, there is no registers especially such registers as XMM0, CX, uh, AX, and so on and so forth. So there is something hard-coded there that prevents us like easily, um, you know, compile that to WebAssembly. So let's actually try to take a look at some of the other files. So this is the zeroth one. What about the first one? Look at that. The first one, actually, we managed to compile it relatively successfully, right? So this is the O file. And if we open it, look at that. It's a wasm. It's actually wasm, right? It's a, it's a magic number for for wasm. And if I take a look at the file, it says this is a WebAssembly module, right? It is in fact a WebAssembly module. So, and uh, to to check that, we can try to convert it into the what the WebAssembly text representation. So to do that, I have a tool called uh, wasm to uh, to what, right? It comes with uh, uh, wabbit tools. Mm, okay, so let's wait until KGB actually approves my query. Thank you very much. So how are you guys doing? I think it's actually the day is over. So I think the oh okay, they approved it. 
I thought that maybe the uh, the KGB agents, like in their office, uh, went home, so they didn't approve my, they wouldn't approve my query until tomorrow. So, but they but they still there. They're still in the office. Thank you very much. So uh, this thing is uh, available with like the WebAssembly binary toolkit. So it has a lot of things in here, like wasm to C, uh, wast to JSON. No idea what the fuck it is, but the, the thing that we need is wasm to what. What's cool is that it also has what to wasm, so we can easily convert between binary tools and the uh, binary representation and the text representation, which is rather convenient. So I'm gonna give the link in here. Mm -mm. Okay, so uh, let me let me see. So I'm gonna go to the description. Where is my description? Specifically, I wanna go to J break the fourth one. Yeah, there we go. So Wobbit. Cool. Mm -mm -mm. Mm, so dot build. Here it is. Uh, wasm to what? So wasn't Jai one. So here's the O file, and there's something wrong in here. And I suppose this is because my wasm tools are kind of old. So uh, let's actually like download the latest version here. I hope it's not uh, gonna take 20 minutes. Right. So we have stuff for Ubuntu. Right. So I suppose I'm gonna download Ubuntu. Uh, that we get so please not be 20 minutes okay it's relatively fast look at that okay cool uh let me now uh, unpack this entire stuff right oh okay, okay it's over uh -huh. so now i'm gonna try to do wap it bin wasm to what right wasm to what and let's try to do wasm j one o and unexpected opcode unexpected opcode mm -hmm. so it managed hmm so it compiled it down to WebAssembly, but it has unexpected opcode you know what's interesting if you like go to here like if you open this ll file right and search for that specific you will literally see this opcode so this opcode is forcefully injected in here so it's yet another case of you know um something being hard-coded for x86-64 and we're inside of some sort of procedure let's actually take a look at the procedure that we're inside in uh, inside of uh, so there's a lot of calls in here. So we're inside of procedure called ensure synchronization is initiated, right? So let's actually try to search for that specific uh, thing. Um, so let me see. Um, right, it's a rather interesting thing, isn't it? Uh, grip or n? Do we have anything about that? Hmm. So there's a build option to tell the compiler to output everything in a single file instead of multiple OBG L files. LVM option enable split module false. Oh, okay, thank you so much. I, did, I still didn't understand why it was split. Is it for for the sake of, you know, multi-threading, right? Because that's the only reason why, uh, like, why I, the only reason I can think of to, to split them. Uh, but anyway, thank you. Thank you so much. I'm gonna try that. So if we take a look at this thing, uh, there we go. It's a it's an assembly, um, and there is a lot of inline assembly, right? And I suppose the the primary thing that sort of like uh, prevents us from easily compiling um, this entire thing to WebAssembly, right? Like properly, is uh, all of the inline assemblies in here so we need to somehow get rid of them or i don't know maybe ignore them remove them i don't really re want to remove them because they may break the logic of the uh, of the code so maybe i could replace them with sort of like equivalents that may be broken but like overall work uh, correctly for example here we have a compare and swap right so it's needed for some sort of like multi-threading 
stuff, right? But I do not plan to do any multi-threading, so maybe I could like implement with the implement this thing like with the with something very naive, right? Just to get rid of the assembly stuff. Uh, anyway, so let's actually try this uh, the option that doesn't split things. Um. <clears throat> so let me go to first uh, OPT. Mm -mm. Uh, for a second, I forgot where I am. So let's let me try to do prop. Mm -hmm. And let's go to the compiler as well. Mm -mm. Mm -hmm. Split. Enable split modules. Uh, I don't know. And it's only for LLVM. That's what's interesting. Right. So for the x86-64 backend, you don't really have a split modules, right? Uh, yeah, you don't. Look at that. Interesting. Hmm. Uh, let's actually try false. And I'm going to try to... It's actually rather dangerous. So I probably want to move these things somewhere. Let's actually move them to OPT, right? So here's the folder. I'm going to actually move everything there because this is where I... Uh, keep all of my third-party things, right? Uh, let me remove this build. There we go. And uh, opt first. All right. So maybe that will work. It's taking some time. I presume, yeah. It's output and all of that stuff. Okay, that's cool. Uh, and now, if I try to compile this entire thing. Mm. So, clang, uh -huh. target wasn't 32. That's not particularly convenient. So, I'm thinking maybe, mm, maybe I should create some sort of a build, uh, build script super quick. So, it would be nice to actually do that all of that from Jai, but I'm currently experimenting, right? I'm currently experimenting, so I'm going to do it in Bash. Uh, I, what is going on? Right, I'm gonna currently do it in Bash, and then later, maybe, if I have enough time, uh, I'll port that to Jai, because it would be nice to actually do everything from Jai, right, from a, from a single language. But for now, I'm gonna just do it like that. Uh, okay, so what I wanna have, I wanna have like a clang, which points at the clang in here. All right, there we go. So I'm going to take that thing, and put it in here. So this is gonna be home. All right, so this is our home. Then bin clang. All right, so in here then I'm gonna do clang. Um, rather like this. Target wasn't 32. C. Uh, and then we're gonna do it like this. There you go. Do we need anything else? I didn't think so. Uh, okay. So then I'm going to enable the executable and let's try to run that. So, okay. So it complains about also this X00. Uh, so we can actually take a look at like what's up with that X00. So let's go there. I don't want to open it with Emacs, that's for sure. Uh, right, I don't want to open it with Emacs because that will kill Emacs. So let's actually open it with Wim because Wim. Uh, Vim, not Wim, <laughs> right, Wim. Uh, Vim is way better at big files, right? So let's actually open it in here. Though Vim still sucks when it comes to long lines, and that's one of the problems that we have in here. But anyway, so XMM0. Uh, okay, so we do have XMM0, and let's actually take a look at in like at the procedure where it is uh, called print to builder. Right, so let's find it in uh, J. Mm -hmm. eh. Emacs grep uh, print to was it print to builder? Yeah, print to builder. So let's take a look. So I probably want to find specifically the declaration of that thing because that's the only thing I'm interested in. Uh, do we have any? Okay, so we do have uh, assembly stuff. And do we have specifically XMM? 
I suppose... We are inside of CMD. Okay, so that's very interesting. Uh, where this thing is defined? Oh, okay, so we can actually kind of disable that. Can I just go ahead and say false and like disable this entire thing? Uh, I think I should be able to, like, I straight up disable the, the CMD. Um, let me see. But to do that, of course, uh, uh, we'll have to recompile the entire thing. Okay, I'm gonna do first. So, uh, thank you so much, Valenie, for 12 months of tier 1 subscription. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And Rope me. Cad, thank you so much for the rate. Uh, I wonder if you can parameterize this verse at compile time without changing the source. Uh, I don't know. Maybe there is a way. Um, maybe there is no. I don't know. Okay, so let me let me try to do that. Is it gonna complain? Okay, it is complaining about different thing. It doesn't complain about XMM anymore, at least. Right. So uh, let's open this thing. And so complaining about specifically AX. Can I find AX? Um, it's searching. Even Veeam kind of a, like has a hard time doing this. I think. Okay, so it, it found it, which is which is nice. So let me take a look at the procedure where this happened. Compa my compare and swap. Okay, so this is another thing that we'll have to fix. So you know what would be nice? Um, it would be nice to find all of the assembly, uh, like inline assemblies, you know, um, somehow. And you know what? This language has like an extensive metaprogramming uh, capabilities, right? So essentially, it allows you to subscribe to compiler events, right? And every time it compiles something, some sort of construction, right? Procedure or maybe block or something, um, it will send a message that you can actually catch at compile time and do something with that message. For example, print. Let's try to write a meta program that is uh, listening for all of the compiled assembly in line assembly and prints their location. And that way we'll know like all of the places where we have to like disable something or maybe update something to, so it doesn't generate assembly because that's something that prevents us from compiling to WebAssembly. So uh, Louis HGH, thank you so much for two months of Twitch Prime subscription. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um. <clears throat> okay. So uh, let me let me see. So the way you do that, right? The way you do that, you actually intercept the compiler, right? So there is an example in OPT. So let's take a look at the. I think it's how to basic meta problem. There you go. So yeah. Essentially, after you, uh, yeah, so you add build in here. After you set all the build options, you start the uh, compiler interception, right? So you do intercept the compiler, right? Then you add the compilation file and you start listening for messages. So here they basically call to a function, but the function itself just organizes the event loop. The event loop is just like infinite loop, right? While true, we are waiting for compiler messages, right? So there is the message. So, and if we fail to get a message, we break out of the loop. That means like we have to finish the, this stuff. And then once we got a message, we have different kinds of messages, right? So file, it's when it's sent when a particular file is compiled. So there's also import. Uh, phase and stuff like that. In, in fact, let's actually take a look at all of the uh, kinds of messages. So let's go to compiler. Uh, right, let's find this thing. So th this is a message structure. Um, message. Okay, so here are all of the uh, all of the kinds. Right. So here are all of the kinds. Uh, so I suppose I think the one that we're interested in is complete. Uh, okay, 
the compiler sent this message when compilation is finished. Well, this is probably something that we have to handle anyway. Right, so let's try to do message kind equal case uh, complete. And we're gonna break out of the loop. Right, so break in here doesn't really break out of the switch, it breaks out of the loop. Right. Uh, so I think the one we're interested in is type checked. Yeah, there you go. So we get this message every time some code has been, uh, has passed type checking. We can inspect the code, search for things, modify code, etc. Uh, for now, we'll just report how much code has been type checked. So essentially, um, once something is type checked, you can go ahead and do something with that, right? So we can even modify. I never tried modifying uh, the type checked code, uh, but that would be actually rather interesting. So anyway, um, what we have to do, we have to take the message and cast it to message type checked, right? As you can see, so here's the message, we cast it to that one, uh, and then we're doing something with that. So let me see. So but first we have to do type checked. Mm, so maybe I'm going to do it like that. So here's the type checked. And if we take a look at the type checked structure in the compiler. So here it is. It sort of like derives message. And on top of that, it has all of the necessary declarations, right? So code declarations, code procedure header, and stuff like that. I suppose this is the thing that we're interested in. Like all uh, contains every member in the above array. So essentially it contains all of the uh, type checked code nodes, right? So I suppose it sends that message in bundles, right? So it type checks a bunch of things, then it accumulates them in a bundle and send this, uh, sends, this, sends it as a, you know, as a single message, I think. I'm not 100% sure. But if you take a look at the code node, I think code node is rather interesting thing. So here are different kinds of code nodes that you, uh, you know, can know about, right? Block, literal, ident, context. Uh, this is literal, like you have the entire AST. You have an access to the entire AST. You subscribe to a message of the compiler and you get the entire AST of the code. You can do whatever you want with it. So the thing we're interested in is ASM, right? So and this is probably the things that we're looking for. Um, okay, so let me go back to message uh, type checked, right, type checked, uh, and let me see. So you know what I want to do? I want to actually print how many of these things we have type checked. Uh, something like type checked uh, things, right, so it's going to be type checked, um, then all and then i need to take the length i don't remember how to take the length. i think it's just a count right yeah there we go so and after you're done by the way you have to finish the interception i forgot about that uh i forgot about finishing the interception i think it has to be has to be here right there we go so you start the interception you organize the loop you wait for the messages um Actually, you probably have to start the compilation before you organize the loop. And then you finish the interception. There you go. So let's try to compile this into that thing. So it didn't compile, semicolon, uh, another semicolon, sure. Anything else? Oh, okay. So I forgot a new line, but it kind of worked. As you can see, it kind of worked. Ah, okay, cool. All right, so there you go. So here are the things that it managed to type check. Mm -mm. That's all the things actually. Hmm. Okay, so among these things, I suppose we want to iterate all of them, right? So compiler. Uh, so the type of this thing is type checked, and type checked looks like a generic type. So type checked. Yeah, there we go. So essentially it wraps a particular type and within this thing we have sub expressions which are the flattened expressions in the right side of the declaration so i think this is the sub expression that we need right so essentially i want to iterate uh type uh, type checked all right 
So, and within this thing, I want to iterate all of the sub-expressions, like flattened sub-expressions. And within this thing, um, so code node, if the kind of this thing is asm, we want to print it somewhere. Right, let's actually print something like uh, asm detected. Asm detected. So we can also put the name here. And let's see if it's going to actually do anything. Oh my god. There we go. Uh, okay. So it detected five inline asm things. That's actually pretty cool. It would be nice to know where they're located. So we know there's like at least five of them in the entire code base, right? In the entire code that we're trying to compile. Um, right. So let me see. The code node must have a location of some sort. Uh, location. Oh, there you go. I think that's it. That's it, actually. Okay. So can I do something like this? Um, oh my god. Emacs, come on. You can do that. I believe in you. So uh, location. All right, so, and I suppose here we have a message that we have to print, right? So if you take a look at the compiler, right? So this is in, in closing load. Uh, we have to find message file, message file, and it does have fully passed file name. So let's actually print that. Mm, fully passed file name. So let's actually put it like this. Uh -huh. All right. So it didn't compile. Uh, is not okay. Is not a member of location. Oh, this is because it's a uh, enclosing import. Not enclosing import. What was that? Enclosing load. That's what it was. Uh huh. So. Uh huh. Um. Closing load. Okay, so this is the files where we have detected the inline assembly. There is five places. So it would be also nice to know the lines where they're located. Okay, L0 is the index of the starting line. L1 is the index of the ending line. Oh, location basically gives you a range. Okay, and C0 is like starting character and C1 is probably ending character. So I suppose to just print where it starts, we only need like L0. Uh, right, so let's actually give it a try. Something like this. Um, okay, so this is going to be something like AT location L0. Right, and let's give it a try. And now we know all of the location of all of this assembly stuff. How about that? Holy shit. What the fuck? Why the fuck can I just do that? Holy sh... This is exactly what I was talking about. Right, so you need a language that allows you to query things however you want. This is so fucking awesome. You, you can, like, you want to know where all of the assembly stuff that prevents you from compiling it to, uh, to WebAssembly? You can just, like, search for it at compile time. Here we go. So, yeah. It's pretty cool. <laughs> So, what's funny is that in print, we already disabled use CMD, but it's still, it's still there, which is kind of weird. But it doesn't intercept the compilation anymore, so it should be fine. Mm, so, I suppose we need to focus on the runtime support thingy. So, compare and swap. Like, I'm pretty sure if I'm going to do WebAssembly, I'm never going to call this function ever. Um, right. Uh, we don't want to take dependency on atomic, so here's the simple one. Right, so here we initialize synchronization, and sure synchronization is called for writing strings. Right, so when I'm going to be compiling to WebAssembly, I do not plan to write any strings. So I don't really care if that thing works correctly or not. You know what I mean? So I don't really care. So what I do care... Uh, is the lack of this thing. So you know what? I'm going to introduce something like wasm uh, true, right? And I'm going to go through all of these things, right? 
uh, if um, wasm. Mm. So you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna like literally implement compare and swap and swap in non-atomic way, <laughs> right? <laughs> How does it work? Compare and swap. Um, compare and swap. <sighs> KGB agents are slacking at their job again. Um, uh, this is funny if you know what John said about Wasm. I know what he said about Wasm. <laughs> <laughs> he can't stop me. Uh, my next step is going to be implementing garbage collector uh, for for J through meta programming. Uh, <laughs> okay, so essentially, so we have all the new version, and if the current value is, I guess, equal to old, we replace it with new. But in this particular version, we also return old. So essentially, what we need to do in here, if dest is equal to old, right? So not equal to old. If equal, then we're gonna set it to uh, to new. There we go. I think that's what we're gonna have in here, right? It's not atomic in any way, shape, or form. But again, I don't care, right? So I, I need this thing to compile and. Uh, and work more or less correctly if it will be called accidentally. You know what I mean? Right, so uh, the correctness of this code is not my goal, which is kind of weird, right? Uh, but anyway. Uh, so where's another place? So here we basically sort of pause. How about we don't pause, right? How about we just like allow to do this thing? Uh, if I remember correctly, this code is essentially just like waits uh, a little bit. Let's let's not wait at all. Um, if not wasm, just do that. Mm -hmm. And another place is this one. Break. Um, I guess we can do it like that. If not wasm. Uh, maybe specifically for like web assembly, we could have like special way breaking into the debugger because uh, you know browsers do have debugger and stuff like that. So that should be fine. Mm. Okay, I think we addressed all of the all of the assembly stuff, right? Yeah, we addressed all of them. It still prints them, right? Uh, but it shouldn't have them in the in the final LL file, right? So let's actually try to call uh, build this page. Okay, so it created final wasm thingy, which is rather interesting. Okay. So uh, let's try to convert it to what file just to see what the hell is going on in there. Um, so I think I can do a similar thing, uh, right? So it can be opt uh, wabbit. Mm, let's go to bin. Uh, wasm to what? Home. Boom. Uh, wasm to what? Mm, wasm to what? And this thing should basically give me this thing. So I also know that it spits everything into the uh, into the standard output. So I have to redirect that. All right. So let's give it a try. Uh, okay. So and it created. So it even has something. Look at that. It even has something, which is kind of cool. All right. And look at that. We have list of functions. We have literally a list of functions that we need to implement in JavaScript for this entire thing to work. How about that? <laughs> How about that? So this is actually pretty cool. Um, all right. I suppose the thing that we want to do is basically link this entire stuff, right? But we have to link it with special flags, right? In Snake, I remember, 
fucking snake, 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 snake. Uh, let me see, let me see. Uh, so we had some flags in here. Um, like, we export functions separately, but as far as I know, we can tell the linker to just like export everything. We also said uh, no entry point and allow undefined. So these flags uh, could become useful for us uh, when trying to link this entire stuff. All right, so let me try. Um, let me see. Um, can I go to clang bin? Uh, wasm, okay, so here's a wasm LD. That's cool. That is very, very cool. Um, wasm LD. Wasm LD. Mm -mm -mm. So if I remember correctly, it's something like that. Uh, wasm 32. And uh, let's just go ahead and, and do that. Right, so let's just try to compile this thing. Uh huh. So what is it gonna say? All right. Invalid data symbol offset. And you know what's interesting? Uh, people were talking about this problem on the uh, secret beta server. So people were already trying to do that, and this is the dead end that people hit. Right. So like after that, it's just like unclear where do you even go. Right, so what is like invalid data symbol offset? What the hell is that? But I found a very interesting workaround for that thing. Right, so have you noticed that I can, even though it is not particularly linkable wasm, I can turn that wasm into what? Can I take that what? Can I take that what and uh, convert it back into wasm? If I convert that what back into wasm, wasm, is it going to be the same file? So let's give it a try. Uh, so what to wasm. So you, you have to go the, the other way around, right? So what to wasm, uh, what to wasm. Mm, so, and let's just give it like that, right? And I'm not going to do that. Uh, and let's see. Okay. So here is this thing. And it's definitely not the same file. So this is the original file. And this is the one after the conversion. This is the one after the conversion. So if you try to now link the one after the conversion. It is not going to link because we didn't really specify the output so we should probably specify the output so sh what should we specify in here let's say main wasm let's call it main wasm uh let's call it main wasm okay so the problem here is that it's not relocatable right to actually link this entire thing uh we have to make it relocatable right we have to make it relocatable uh, so can we actually do that? So if you take a look at the wabbit bin what to wasm, right? So it's what to wasm. Let's take a look at the help. Uh, okay. So here we go. So you can actually make it relocatable if you convert it back. So let me see. So we have to put minus R in here and let me try to do the build this edge. Mm-hmm. Invalid symbol type. That is rather interesting. Hmm. Invalid symbol type. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Hmm. So, yeah, for some reason, doesn't really work. Mm. You know what? I need a fresher clank. 
So I need to make a small break because I'm actually falling asleep. And one of the things I want to do, I want to actually make a cup of tea. <laughs> My brain doesn't really work properly, so I definitely need a cup of tea. And after a small break, we're going to try to solve this problem. Um, all right, so it turns out I'm an idiot because why the hell do I need to, um, how to say that, link things even further if I already have um, a WebAssembly file? Doesn't really make much sense, does it? So uh, maybe I can just like load it up, probably. Uh, so let's give it a try. Mm, I don't even have to do this kind of stuff. So the only thing I really need is just like that. Uh, let me see. It should be enough, actually, believe it or not. So this is enough and this is the relocatable WASM file. Right, the only thing we need to do, we just need to load it up. So let's actually use Node.js to load things up because I don't, uh, because with Node.js I don't have to set up the HTML stuff and also web server, right? Because it's easier to do that via web server if you want to fetch the uh, WebAssembly file, right? So I don't want to do any of that stuff. So Node.js load WebAssembly. So how do you do that? Uh, so we get to the point of the stream, of Jai stream, when we are programming in JavaScript. <laughs> How about that? Jai script, by the way. Cheers. Oh, that's a pretty good piece. <sighs> All right. So I suppose that's the that's the thing. Yeah, that's literally how we do that. So I'm going to just copy paste some code, uh, load JS. Okay. So here we are loading the file. So the file that we want to load is probably this one, right? So that's what we want to load. Uh, this is a wasm file and we're instantiating that and we get the wasm module. So the only thing I probably want to do in here is print the wasm module. Okay. So let's go ahead and just try to run the load JS. Uh, oh yeah, this thing returns a promise, so maybe I have to do something like, I don't remember, is it like catch, um, I forgot, what is the way to handle an error in a promise? It, it is catch, right, so can I just do console error, is it going to work? Oh yeah, it is work. So, uh, instant must be present. Oh yeah, I know what it is. So, a WebAssembly... This is a scuffed example. What the fuck? Um, WebAssembly instantiate. Because I quite vividly remember that instantiate has a second argument, which is an import object, right? Where you're gonna have all of the imports and stuff. Right, so let's put it in here. So, and, uh, yeah, you, you need to have an environment, right? So this is the environment. And within the environment, you would need to have linear memory and some other stuff. All of the things uh, that we have in here. So you see, it started with linear memory. In fact, I think we can even copy paste this entire stuff and just like uh, stub all of the things within the environment. I'm pretty sure we can do that. Uh, yep, yep, yep. So let me let me try to do that. Uh huh. So then uh, I probably want to do it like this. Right. Mm -hmm. So here is an idea. We're going to actually do something like that. Uh, yes. On top of that, we can even print that a certain function was called, just in case it was called. Uh, console log, uh, and we're gonna do something like... Mm, so... Not implemented, right? Implemented, and I'll have to put it like that. Eh, God damn it! Uh, so can I just do it like that? There we go. Yeah, there we go. So if the code 
for whatever reason calls any of these functions from the import we'll see that in the in the log on top of that maybe i should actually use console error in that case uh, console error there we go. so maybe another interesting thing it would be nice to actually accept all of the arguments right something like this i think this is how you do that right and then um basically print all of them i think that would be nice uh -huh. so args is that how we do that i think this is how we do that right so in case the WebAssembly code calls any of these functions we're gonna see the uh, like a specific function that was called and also their arguments so we can sort of implement all of that uh three dots oh okay sure thank you mm -hmm. All right, so let's see if it's going to work. Mm. Okay. Oh, wait, linear memory is supposed to be a memory. Oh, okay, that's that's really interesting. Mm. Okay, so one of these imports is not what I think it is. And how many of such memories do we have? Okay. Okay. I accidentally killed Emacs yet again <laughs> with a long line. Right. Oh boy. Uh, let's go back. Okay. So, what do we have? Uh, I suppose if I go back to here. Right. Mm. You know what I'm thinking? Yeah, anyway. Um, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, so linear memory has to be a memory. Web assembly. New web assembly memory. A long line, yeah. Uh, come on, you can do that. Tavarish Mayor. I believe in you. <clears throat> okay, there we go. So, what was in memory and what do we initialize it with so there's a memory description initial and maximum uh so initial size of memory in pages and as far as i know page is just like 64 kilobytes right so that's usually what it is um maybe i want to have something like this so there's also indirect function table You know what's interesting? But I don't use any of this shit. I really don't, actually. And I remember that in the compiler we had something interesting. Can we just like do a little bit of a dead code elimination? Though maybe we do use linear memory, right? Maybe we do use a linear memory. Um so dead there we go yeah so dead code elimination i'm thinking what if i enable this thing can it get rid of the linear memory if i never use it that's a very good point actually so i like if it eliminates that maybe i'll never have to create that and maybe it also will um yeah DC is on by default, but how is it on by default when I suppose default is going to be zero and there is no default in here? There, like, there is a default here, but there is no default in here. How is that possible? Like, I didn't see this any default. So that's weird. I don't think so. I think default is known. I have a strange feeling that default is known. Anyway, so. Um, Let's go to first. 
and uh, the O, and let's say all. Eliminate all. Everything that is not used, gone. Uh, all the team, join, join, join. First, and let me see. So here is Azim detected. Azim detected. Azim detected. So, and then building here. Um, so, interestingly, is that I still want to do the thing where I convert uh, this stuff to wasm, uh, to what, in fact, because I want to be able to see what's going on there. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. So, this wasm is not needed, but this one. I uh, still have linear memory. I wonder if the linear mem memory, because I include some stuff. Right, so if, what if I remove this entire thing? Right, and then I just try to compile that. Which, by the way, got rid of the print, so definitely we have less uh, of these things. Uh, and then, eh, didn't want to do that. Uh huh. Okay. Okay, so that's way smaller. That is way, it's it still contains this linear, and it also has this table indirect indirect function table. I still I don't really know what it, what the hell it is, and also there is this global thingy. Um. Hmm. All right, so let's just create that. New web assembly memory. Mm, so memory descriptor is an object. Uh, initial. Yeah, we can say initial. I'm going to say two. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes. Okay. Uh, so then we need to create table, web assembly table. Mm -hmm. I wonder, there is a lot of things in the build stuff. There's a lot of things. Like arrays bounds check, casts bound check. What if I like disable all of that? Uh, stack traces out of the reference. I'm pretty sure it generates a lot of like runtime. Um, so what if we just like don't do that? Will it reduce it even further? Right, because we want to like as little runtime as possible. So I think it's a good idea actually. Uh, let me go there and just like disable as much as possible in here. Mm, so all of that is false. So this stuff, I suppose, needs to be disabled. Uh, array bounds check. Mm -hmm. That code elimination output. Uh huh. So backend machine type. Emit debug info. Okay, so emit debug info is definitely something that we'll have to disable. Uh huh. User data. I guess that's it. I don't think anything else here is needed. Um, so this one is BO. Mm hmm. Though, off, 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 off. So this is very unsafe language now. Uh, extremely unsafe, in fact. Absolutely unsafe. So maybe we want to also remove these comments, and uh, this one is going to be none. None of the debug info. 
as little as possible. Cool. Mm, so now, let's try to recompile this thing. And it was actually super fast. Look at that. Uh huh. So this entire thing is rather small. And what do we have in here? Ooh. We have some stuff in here, but it compiled anyway. It compiled anyway. Okay, so that actually reduced it, I think. I don't know. Did it reduce anything? I don't know. Uh, so, new web assembly table. I don't really know how to create tables, but we'll, we'll see, we'll see. How to just shouldn't do anything in runtime? Ah, very well then. I'll disable it just in case. Mm -mm. Come on, you can do that. All right. WebAssembly table. I never actually used WebAssembly tables, to be fair. I'm not really sure how they work and what they're for. Um, so table descriptor. So it needs an element, the string representing the type well, it bestowed there, these have a value of any func or external ref. Mm. The type of a value. Uh, initial number of the elements of the table. So I would presume this is the like func ref then. Sure. Um, so let me do... Uh, so load js js new web assembly uh, table and the description in here is what element an element is any func right so any func and initial uh, let's say 69 right we're gonna have 69 of them okay so let's see if that worked uh, load JS uh, stack point uh, import it must be okay WebAssembly global I, I didn't know it's a thing wait it is in fact a thing creates a new global variable huh I'm actually learning things right now descriptor value uh huh mm hmm so stack pointer, which is rather interesting because do we even have any memory anywhere? Right. I'm actually kind of scared to... Ah, whatever. Mm, new web assembly global. Right, new web assembly global. Um, descriptor. A string right so the type of this thing has to be i32 right so this is i32 uh, mutable uh, value that defines if it's mutable I think it has to be false right by default it's false maybe that means I don't have to do that uh, then the value let's let's put zero in here just in case because why not Okay. Import mutable global must be global object. Uh, oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm already a bit tired, so I'm research it. Uh, okay. Does not match the expected mutability. Okay. M mutable true. Okay. We successfully loaded WebAssembly module generated by, like, from Jai, essentially. So we managed to do that successfully. Okay, uh, so the thing we need in here, we need to take a look into the instance, right? So let's take a look at the instance. So here's the instance. As far as I know, instance should provide experts, right? Uh, and there is no experts in here. And that is very important. That is extremely important. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Because 
usually uh, I export all of the functions. Uh, export all of the functions. Might be dead code that is removed. I don't think it is a dead code uh, because here it is. Here's the main program. I don't think it got removed. Um, so usually I export all of the functions and I export them via the linker, right? So I export them via the linker. Essentially, um, I take wasm ld target um, actually wasm32, and then I say no entry and export all uh, and something like this and maybe i output that to mm, main dot wasm right main dot wasm so this is what, what i usually do but it may not work yeah so because of the invalid offset and remember that i fixed that invalid offset by doing this thing right and converted converting it back right essentially converting it back mm -hmm. so what to wasm what to wasm also relocatable and that should give me that thing, which I then can try to invalidate a symbol offset. So I remember I tried to do that with a different version of Clang. I think the version of Clang may actually play a huge role in here. So let me try a different one. So I think I, I do have the 13th version somewhere. You're still linking O. I know that because this thing generates O. So it replaces the O as far as you can tell. Though, uh, just a second. What to uh, wasm? I want to take a look. So output file. I can provide the output. So it's going to be that. Uh -huh. Fixed. Mm -hmm. Okay, so something like that. I think that's a good idea. So, and I'm going to do. Mm -hmm. So we got that. Yeah. Uh, you create the fixed one. Yes, it did in fact create the fixed one, and here it is. So for the fixed one, I would also like to you know, output the fixed version, because I want to just see what's up with that. Uh, right, so did it get fixed or anything? Uh -huh. So this is what of the fixed, and it didn't really change much. Anyway, so uh, let me let me just search. I think I do have uh, a little bit fresher clang. Um, let me quickly copy it. Mm, 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 mm. 13th, we need the 13th, okay. Uh -huh. Mm-hmm, interesting. Mm -hmm. <sighs> That's all stuff. Mm -mm -mm. LLVM, classic LLVM. Mm -hmm -hmm 
Okay, so I'm gonna check the chats. Mm-hmm. is a chunky boy, yeah, he is indeed. So it's finished finally okay so let's go here and i think i'm gonna do the following thing i'm gonna create like a little vm version and i'm gonna just put this thing in there uh LLVM. Okay. Version. Yeah, boy. and uh, then i'm gonna have like a 13th one yeah. Come on, um, why is everything so slow? Okay, so I'm using the 11th version. Okay, that's cool. And now I'm gonna switch to a different version. All right. Okay, cool. This is what I wanted. Yes. You know why? Because now it's a checkmate. I can now do allow undefined. Right, because all of the undefined are the external functions, right? So I was using the old clang, and this mother flipper works now. Look at that. Um, so this is the fixed version. And um, I might as well, actually. Do I need to fix that? I feel like I'm fixing too much, right? Uh -huh. So let's take a look at the main. Okay, no such really. Okay, yeah. So if I take a look at the main, yes. When you do it this way, uh, the linear memory—it it doesn't even have a linear memory. Any memory that it has, okay. So and then you have a stack, stack pointer, right? So this is a stack pointer. And it's actually a local internal thing. Okay, that is actually perfect. Um, I wonder if we need to fix anything. All right. So what if I link a not fixed version? Can I just do that, I wonder? Uh, no, I can't. I, I literally have to fix it first. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the way to fix that is actually to generate what out of that and then back into wasm that sort of i think that resets something right and makes it correct so it, it fixes something there but i don't know what exactly uh right anyway so low js and i think i'm gonna actually start over uh right i'm gonna take these imports right, so this is the import and maybe that was a bad idea Right, because I'll have to, yeah, I'll have to do that again. Uh, so we don't have that. Uh, so right, I guess that's it. Right. Mm -mm. Mm, load JS linear memory. Oh yeah, because I'm loading the wrong object. Okay, so I have to uh, load main wasm. Okay. Oh, compiling function. Expect it. Fuck. Mm. Wait, what? Compiling function. Okay. Uh, 
Yep. Main <laughs> fixed. <laughs> All right. So what wasn't right? So that may actually work. Okay. So now uh, fixed uh, node. Okay. Love it. Here are all of the functions in there. Look at that shit. Look at that shit. Okay. So uh, now we, we may try to actually like write some functions that do things, right? For instance, uh, I don't know. Let's introduce a function, something like sum, right? And I'm going to say it's going to accept, it's going to accept uh, i32. Uh, b i32 and then return i32. I'm not sure. Do we have. Okay, so we have u32, I suppose. And here I'm gonna just do something like this. Cool. So after that, I'm going to just compile this entire thing, right? And then rebuild the entire stuff in here, right? And then if I load the, uh, the thing, do I have summon here? I don't have summon here because I feel like it was eliminated. Um, so let's actually not do the dead code elimination. <laughs> um, let's actually do like that. All right. And one more time, I'm going to do that. Then I'm going to do that. Okay. Then I'm going to do uh -huh. a node. Uh, load js sum we've got some so it's kind of like mangled a little bit it's a little bit mangled uh, but let me try to find that so here is the sum the weird thing about sum is that I said accept two arguments but it accepts four what's up with that so do we have any Jai developers in the chat? So I set uh, accept two arguments, but it accepts four of them. It's actually really interesting. What's up with four arguments in here? Context, yes, people know about context. So one of the arguments is actually pointed to the context, uh, right? So one of the things we can do um, is say no context, right? So as far as I know, this sort of thing uh, tells the compiler to do not, uh, you know, pass any context. Uh, all right. And so let's try to do it one more time. Uh -huh. And let's rebuild everything. Uh -huh. So revert and sum. Here it is. So now it accepts three. Right. So what's the third one? You may notice that it doesn't return anything. So the um, the result apparently is returned via the argument. So if the result is returned via the argument, that means that the argument is a pointer somewhere in the memory, right? So let's actually try to to call this function and see what's going to happen. Uh, so I'm going to go to load.js. Right. And um, so it's experts and it's going to be sum. Uh, is it the same sum? Yeah. So it's, it's that sum. 23, 16. So by the way, this prefix actually changes every time you recompile the program. So you probably, if you're going to do like that uh, via the JavaScript, you probably want to write some code that searches for the function, right? That sort of resolves the function. Uh, okay, so we're going to provide the following thing. I'm going to provide... Uh, 34 and 35 and I'm gonna put zero in here so I want I'm gonna assume that the result is the third argument right and the return address is gonna be zero so that means it's going to write the result at the beginning of the memory right so let's actually confirm that it doesn't crash when I try to run the entire thing right so this is gonna be little JS so it doesn't crash which is nice uh, then let's take a look at the memory uh, right, so we're gonna have experts. We should have uh, memory. I'm pretty sure. So let's try to do uh, console log. 
yeah, we do have a memory. So let's actually uh, look at it as a buffer. And then also, since it's a U32, we're going to construct a U32 array out of that. Right. We just successfully compiled a very simple basic function in Jai, written in Jai to WebAssembly, loaded it into the Node.js context and run it. And it worked. So we successfully did that. The question is, can we do the same shit in the browser? Can browser actually do that? That's a very good question. Uh, so let me see. So let's actually create index.html, right? So index.html, uh, HTML, HTML, there we go. So it's going to be head, uh, head. So title, 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 uh, Jai wasm. Uh, so then, mm, this is how we get kicked from the bed. <laughs> sure. Uh, so let's actually just uh, do it like this. Index.js script. There we go. So we should have that. So, and in here, it's just essentially instead of doing that, right, instead of doing that, we probably have to do fetch, right? And that's basically the same, right? Uh, but the only difference here is that we also have to write um, run the, the Python thing, HTTP server 6969. Um, all right, so let's go there. Uh, and let's open the dev tools. Uh, so we failed to load what? I can't see shit in this mist. Um, index.js. So this is because it's not index.js, it's a load.js. Uh -huh. Okay, instantiate buffer source. Oh, I know why. Because if like fetch returns the promise, so it means you have to instantiate streaming, I think. There we go, 69. It also works in the browser. I just run a Jai code in a browser. Okay, thank you very much. This was my last beta, right? <laughs> So what was the, what was my last beta? Uh, so um, so version uh, just a second twenty seventh right. So twenty seventh was my last beta. I'm not gonna get any more betas after that. <laughs> but yeah, so I managed to run Jai code in a, in a browser, which is actually pretty cool. So I wonder, like, I think I could do something like this. Can I just like say zero, right? Ah. Uh, uh, Okay, so we probably have to do something. Um, two, 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 two. So let's run the, the thingy, Majingi. Yeah, 69. There we go. It's pretty cool. So, but it's a very simple code. It's extremely simple code. It doesn't really interact too much with different environment. But yeah. Um, so, yeah. So the next step is to actually port the game, the jailbreak game, to WebAssembly. Right, and I think I'm gonna do that on the next stream because I'm already streaming for two hours and it's usually my uh, my quota, two hours. Um, okay, does anyone have any questions? I think I need to actually publish all of that stuff somehow. I'm not really sure how. Uh, what would be the most appropriate way to do that? Uh, so... Frexel Snatic, thank you so much for tier 1 subscription. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I really appreciate that. Uh, so, yeah. I wonder, like, this is a very simple example. It's literally, like, 2 plus 2. But if you start adding more different things that rely more and more on the Jaya runtime, uh, you're probably going to have more and more problems, right? So you may start uh, relying on things that require any of these functions, right? So because of that, you want to organize the game so that you don't really need anything in here, except maybe memset. 
So I'm actually okay with using memset, uh, but the, the entire logic of the game has to not depend on any of this stuff. Especially P threads, like what the fuck? <laughs> right, so all that P threads things. Mm -mm. Uh, we can write this one. Yeah, yeah, we can. So essentially memset will accept the pointer to the memory. And what we'll have to do, we'll have to literally get this buffer, right? And initialize the range of that buffer with the provided value, right? So essentially we implementing like a small portion of libc in JavaScript. <laughs> uh, it sounds crazy, but that's 2022 uh, software development, essentially. You're just implementing like a low level stuff in JavaScript. Um, <laughs> It's kind of weird how the entire stack, well, I really hate this word, but the entire stack uh, sort of like turned upside down. Like at the low level, you have JavaScript and at high level, you have C, for instance, right? So, and down the stack, C calls to JavaScript for low level functions. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Um, yeah, anyway. Mm -mm -mm. So, what would be the best way to, you know, provide this thing? I don't know. So, this is a... This is a lot of, like, converting back and forth, back and forth, just to fix things, uh, like, somehow. But I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. So... Mm -mm. Uh, I feel like I want to take this stuff. So it's a build sh index, and I want to like move this thing in here. All right. Uh, build wasm. Right. So we do build wasm. So in here we're trying to compile uh, this thing. Right, so we not well, IOPT build. So we're compiling this thing. So this is a wasm giant. Uh, right. Mm -mm. And that should be it actually, I think. Okay, so if I do build. Uh, okay, so, all right, cool. So it, it did everything I expected to do. And we can try to initialize the, the repo, right? So let's see what we have to commit in here. Mm. Git ignore. So we're gonna ignore build folder, right? Build folder. Uh, what else? Any wasm file is ignored. Any what file is ignored. Any o file is ignored as well. So we only have that stuff. Um, wasm jai is also ignored, so we only have this stuff. Okay, so I'm gonna also write readme. Uh, mm, simple um, jai to wasm. Simple uh, jai to wasm example. Right, so in here I'm gonna have quick start. Uh, I need to find the version. So here is the version that we use. Mm. Then Jai first, then uh, build was a message, then Python 3 HTTP server 6969, then I explore exe. Um, HTTP localhost 6969. So that's basically it. Right. Uh, license. So it's going to be under MIT. You can do whatever you want with it. And there you go. I hope I didn't miss anything. Uh, ready, set, a go. And let's just upload that. Right. So for anyone to try out. Mm 
But again, I'm not sure if it's gonna work with a more complicated example. Maybe it won't. Mm -hmm. Maybe the only thing you can do in here is just like sum up two numbers. Um, oh yeah, fuck. This wasn't true thing. You need to patch. Yeah. Uh, mm -mm -mm. Make sure none of the. Uh, make sure the file program does not contain any inline assembly uh, blocks. Uh, does not contain any ASM blocks, or something like that. Um, the jai first jai command should tell you their location. Go there and remove them. Remove, um, reimplement. I don't know. Uh, and do something with them. Um, okay. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> all of that is extremely hacky. Right. All of that is extremely hacky. I can try to... Uh, maybe make a patch. You know what I mean? Can I make a patch? Yeah. I can try. I can try to make a patch. Um, so let me see, let me see, OPT, so here's J, mm -hmm. so patched, so this is patched one, and what about this one, I'm gonna unzip this thing. Mm -hmm. Can I like do a div between folders with a div utility? I think I should be able to. Mm -hmm. All right, so diff u j and then j patched. Is that a thing you can do? Common subdirectories. Oof. Okay. Linux diff folders. How about the difference between two directories and diff? Okay, so maybe there is something like recursive. Maybe minus r flag. You know what I mean? Should be minus R flag. Oof. Minus R. Recursive. Yeah, it is a thing. Holy shit. Okay. Um, okay, come on, you can do that. Uh, yep. It is a thing. Uh -huh. So, on top of that, like, I'm not sure about this one. So maybe it's not particularly useful for a lot of people, but yeah. No ASM patch. J, no ASM patch. Okay. And J, no ASM patch. There we go. So here's the patch. About that? How about that? I didn't even have to explain what to do, just like provide this thing. Um, so this one is not particularly useful, but I'm going to just keep it just in case. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Jai wasn't. Uh -huh. uh, so the question is, how are we gonna do that? All right. Apply. Uh, Jai no awesome patch. Uh, to your j distribution mm. Mm. it tries to get a read of the uh, of asm blocks because they are not compilable to wasm okay um first Okay. 
Ed J no other. Uh! Patch. So did I actually push? Uh, I think I didn't push there yet. Origin. Okay. Did we push there? We didn't push there yet. Uh huh. Uh huh. Cool. Now give it a try if you want to. I'm not sure if it works on anyone else's machine except mine. So, <laughs> but yeah, it's pretty funny. So yeah, I'm also gonna put that in the description for anyone who's interested in this stuff. Jailbreak four. Uh, right. So there you go. Cool, isn't it? <laughs> Wouldn't the build program that checks for ASM blocks be easier? Build program that checks for ASM blocks. If it's easier, go ahead and do that. Uh, sure. Uh, can the patch file be shared? I, I just shared it. So here it is. Here's the patch file. Uh, 11vm version. 11vm version is known from the build. Right, so you can know all of the versions uh, from here. LLVM and Wabbit as well. So, so I think I actually published all of the necessary information to recreate this experiment, right? So you know all of the versions. You have the patch that I had, you know the version of the Jai. So you've got all the scripts and stuff like that. I think I shared everything to recreate that. It's not, it, it doesn't really work out of the box because like this script probably won't work on your machine unless you have these things in these specific paths. Oh, yeah. Mm -mm -mm. All right, so cool. I hope this is going to be useful for somebody, right? I think it was a very interesting experiment, nonetheless. Um, yeah, so I think I documented the entire process, right? I documented the entire process. Does anyone have any questions, maybe? Uh, regarding, regarding what we've done. I really want to try this approach on the game, right? So, but I think it's going to be a little bit more complicated. So to do that on the game, first I'll have to extract the logic of the game into a separate module. And let's see how it will go. So any idea when my next stream will be? I, I don't know. Like, I don't really have any particular schedule. I usually stream when I feel like it, so it's really difficult to predict. Um, mm -mm. Okay, it's actually pretty interesting. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Can you explain how memory works? It remembers things. Yeah. So which memory, like uh, WebAssembly memory? It's usually just an array of bytes that is shared between the WebAssembly program and the JavaScript. So, and if you modify it in JavaScript, the WebAssembly will be able to see that. Um, how would you interact with HTML components from the code, like uh, a text box or instance? So usually the usual way you interact with HTML from WebAssembly is you import a function, right? Uh, let me see. Where is the load JS? Right, so you import the function. Uh, maybe I'm going to come up with a function, something like get element by ID, right? And I'm, then I'm going to implement it somehow. I'm basically going to wrap document uh, get element by ID. Then somewhere in the JI code, I'm going to define a function get element uh, by ID, right? And I'm going to say that it's some sort of foreign function, right? So then uh, when I compile it, when I compile, it will appear in the imports of the um, of this module. And then once the WebAssembly code calls to this function, it will go into the JavaScript context and will do this thing. So that's how we usually do that in WebAssembly, and I don't think it's that different from like from Jai. 
right? So we just need to see how malloc and memset are defined, right? So we, we can probably do that right now. Uh, opt join modules. Um, so memset, how is it defined? Uh, so intrinsic. Maybe we can just say it's intrinsic. I, I wonder if we can just go ahead and do that. Um, so main jai. Uh, so let's say foo, and let's accept something and say intrinsic. Maybe it's not gonna work. Actually, <laughs> I have a strange feeling that it's not gonna work. Uh, but um, I'm already tired. Binjai first. Didn't fail though, which is nice. Um, now, if I try to build the entire stack, couldn't. Oh. Well, we're starting to get some problems, but yeah, I'll need to research that a little bit later. I don't really know how to say from Jai that I want to import a particular function from the environment so I can use it. And I don't know yet. Uh, so, and it wasn't what, what version of Wabbit? Version of Wabbit is actually literally here. This one. 1.0.20. Do you switch back to the modifier? Oh, yeah, thank you. I'm an idiot. Yeah, I just, yeah. So, I have to use patched. There we go. So, thank you so much. Yeah, it's, it's a patched one. And the patched one worked, so now if I take a look at the main fixed, it's actually, I think, main what? Do I have four in here? Maybe foo was actually removed. So I think I should try to do something like 469 and try to compile that one more time. Okay, uh, actually, nah. You know what? Can I do something like this? J, uh, first J, and then J, OPT, J patched, J Linux. Okay. And no an intrinsic foo doesn't is not going to work. What is what if I say it's a foreign foreign? Uh -huh. Does not specify which library. Um mm -mm -mm -mm. This one is rather interesting. So it expects malloc, but the malloc is never declared anywhere. So that means it's something like very internal to. I don't know. Hmm. So what about some of these functions like lock? Mm -hmm. Really curious, actually. Hmm. Okay, can we say libc then? Uh -huh. libc. Undeclared. Wait. Um. I kind of lost. Uh, just a second. Opt j modules grep. Mm -hmm. By the way, why don't I have it like that? Uh -huh. POSIX. Yeah, it should just work, I think, but it didn't. Yeah. 
Because it's not available there. That's probably why. Yeah, undeclared identifier libc. Which is rather weird. Where is it defined? I don't know. Okay, we'll see. No return type. I mean, it doesn't really have to have any return type. Um, um, how hard would it be to add TypeScript DTTS generation to this for the JS glue? Why? Um, I don't know. It's not really that I'm like looking for. It's not what I'm looking for. So I have no idea how hard would it be. Um, all right. So I guess that's it for today. Thanks everyone who's watching right now. I really appreciate that. Uh, have a good one and I see you on the next stream where we're going to try to apply this approach to the, uh, to the game. To the actual game we'll see how it goes so i'm really sorry that i was super sleepy today because my sleeping schedule has shifted and now during this time i'm usually i'm usually sleeping so i'm actually forcing myself to stream to shift my schedule again so maybe hopefully uh next stream i'm gonna be a little bit more energetic you know what i mean all right thanks everyone for watching love you Mwah.